Hello, it's Dr. Fred Frizzle here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about, about, uh, about vitamin B7, also known as biotin. But, but the thing about this bit of vitamin is it's actually got quite a few names, so I'll write them up here for you. So, it, alternative names for this particular vitamin are vitamin H, coenzyme R, biotin, or even vitamin B7. Yeah, it's just, so as you can see, it's got quite a lot of names, and, and it does actually also have quite a lot of functions as well. Um, like, like one of the main functions is, is to maintain healthy nails. So up there, healthy nails. And it's, it's, it's also used to keep healthy skin, to maintain healthy skin. And it can also be used for healthy hair. But, but there's a few functions that aren't quite as obvious as these. And, and one of these main functions is, is, is the ability of this vitamin to actually assist a particular enzyme which is involved in the citric acid cycle. So right over here, citric acid cycle. Because um, we haven't come across this for a little while. Um, if you watch, watch my video on um, the Krebs cycle, the citric acid cycle is exactly the same thing as the Krebs cycle. I can't stress that enough. A lot of people like get confused because they think, oh, it's got a different name. It must be a completely different thing. But actually, the citric acid cycle is identical, pretty much, to the Krebs cycle. It's, it's pretty much just an alternative name for it. Um, just like this has loads of different names. Uh, so does the Krebs cycle. Okay, so, so the citric acid cycle, it's used, it's used to actually assist a particular enzyme which is associated with the citric acid cycle. And this enzyme is known as pyruvate carboxylase. Um, if you watch my video on the Krebs cycle, which is the same as the citric acid cycle, you realise that, that this shouldn't be too foreign to you, and you actually understand sort of, sort of the, the process. So what I'm about to say now, it'll, it'll actually make a little bit more sense, and it'll come a bit clearer. So I strongly advise you to look at my Krebs cycle video, and, and, that, and that should sort of explain uh, what I'm going about to say now. Right, basically, how, how, this, how this assists the, the citric acid cycle is there's an enzyme called pyruvate, Carboxylase. Now we haven't come across this, across this particular enzyme at all before, but it, it, the only important thing that this actually does is it, it, it assists the carboxylation of oxaloacetate. Like it actually, it actually assists the conversion, sorry, of acetyl coenzyme A, which, which, is, which is sort of one of the products of the link reaction. So acetyl coenzyme A assists the conversion of that into oxaloacetate. Oxaloacetate. Um, yeah, yeah. So basically, it assists the conversion of that flat by adding carbon, carbon dioxide to this, um, which is essentially what carboxylation actually is. The process, any enzyme that's called carboxylase, just assists with a carboxylation reaction that, that sort of stands to reason. But here, um, so from here to here, there's CO2 actually going. In from, in from this particular enzyme known as pruvate de de decarboxylase, so I'll just sort of draw a line to that, because essentially this is being put in in order to assist the conversion of acetylcoenzyme A to oxaloacetate. It's a lot more complicated than that, that's just a lot of simplification, but if you watch my Krebs cycle video, you'll sort of under you understand how it all fits together. You might watch this video a couple of times to actually sort of get the hang of that, and the Krebs cycle one a couple of times, um, but, but like, this isn't an extremely obvious concept to get your head round. And at the moment, it might, might seem quite baffling. But I can assure you, if you watch my Krebs cycle video, that will help. Um, right, so anyway, what's it saying? Oh, yeah, yeah so essentially, it has a lot of functions, one of which is to assist the citric acid cycle by assisting this particular, um, this particular type of enzyme. Uh, it also helps maintain healthy nails, healthy skin, and healthy hair. Okay, so um, what is the recommended daily amount of this? So the RDA, or recommended daily amount, is 0 0.3 milligrams. Now, now milligrams is a, th a thousand milligrams in a gram, so it's a very small amount, as you as you sort of expect with a lot of these a lot of these B type vitamins. If you watch my sort of prior videos to this on on particular uh, types of vitamin B, you'll realise that a lot of them do have a very small um, recommended daily amount. But but there's no need to worry about that because that essentially is good because you don't it means that you don't actually need to consume too much food containing these particular types of vitamin. So that leads on to the question: What foods do actually contain? Uh, biotin, 
Okay, so, so right, so I'm going to name a few foods now. So you have got liver, is one of them, and and, and, and like, I can't stress enough that liver is a brilliant food because it contains loads of vitamins. If you watch a lot of my other videos, you realise that liver's in them as well. Uh, you can also get it from other meats such as pork, and you can get it from cheese as well. Okay, so there's a few sources there you can also get it from like raspberries and, and not particular fruits, but I'm not going to sort of list list loads of them. If you're really interested in the sources, I advise you sort of, sort of go on Google and do a little bit of research because there's, there's absolutely loads of sources, but I've just named sort of a few that are quite common foods. Um, uh, okay, so, so, so what else is this involved in? Well, it's involved in fatty acid, metabol metabolysis, that's a hard word to say, metabolysis. Okay, so how is it involved in fatty acid metabolysis? Well, you, you don't really need to know how it's involved in fatty acid metabolysis, but essentially fatty acid met metabolysis is the breakdown of fatty acids, um, which is very useful like, for processes such as glu gluconeogenesis. Um, you may have come across gluconeogenesis before, but, but like, if not, don't worry, because gluconeogenesis is the, is the conversion of non of non um, of, of non saccharide um, substrates into glucose. Um, so it can be anything from like proteins or fatty acids. So this so fatty acid metabolism is directly linked in with this uh, gluconeogenesis, which is essentially the conversion of, of particular things, particular um, larger, more complex molecules into the simpler glucose molecule. Okay, which is obviously obviously used for the uh, respiration, which the first step is glycolysis. I made a video on that, so you can watch that if you want. Anyway, so so that's that. Um, I'll, I've explained to you already how it's involved with the citric acid cycle. So, right, right. So, what you might want to know is you might want to know some of the overconsumption um, issues, and and you'll be pleased to hear though with this vitamin, it's very hard to actually overconsume it. Um, you, there's been one known case of, of like an elderly woman who like consumed too much, uh, and there's like, this build up of like fluid in her pleural membrane. I don't know if you heard of the pleural membrane, membrane, but it is the membrane around the lungs. Um, well, like, like essentially, it's where there's obviously a lot of fluid stored anyway. But there's not supposed to be too much fluid, and, and what happened to this lady was she got she got like too much fluid build up in her in her pleural space, so she actually had, had to have that fluid removed. Uh, but but that, that's a very very rare thing to happen, and uh, I strongly advise you still not to eat not not to consume absolutely loads of this vitamin, which you can obviously get from these particular foods. But um, I can't stress enough that it's very very rare that, that there should be a problem, and it's very unlikely that you actually have a problem with overconsumption of this particular vitamin. Um, uh, okay, so that leads us on to the deficiency symptoms. Okay, so we've got healthy, healthy nails, healthy skin, healthy hair. I'm not just going to sort of take that on its head and, and, and like say it could be opposite to that because, because like although your nails aren't healthy, it's not a sort of serious defect for your body. Like, like non-healthy nails obviously aren't very nice, but they won't they won't sort of cause any serious health risks. So, so, so the sort of, it, the main health risks are predominantly um, anemia. So right down here, anemia and hair loss, which is also known as alopecia, that, that, that I personally re think is a really good word, um, hair loss, which is also known as alopecia, if I can spell it, that is. Uh, there you go. Okay, so, um, yes, yeah, so, so, so anemia and, and, and alopecia, I should probably mention what anemia is. Um, like, like, like there's this thing called sickle cell anemia, that's a particular form of anemia, uh, which is probably one of the most com common forms of anemia, um, sickle cell anemia. Uh, okay, so what happens is um, that, that the actual red blood cells that, that, that they, they, be they become sort of elongated and they become a funny shape, which reduces the oxygen carrying capacity of that blood cell. Because if you you cast your mind minds back from before, you should realise that blood cells contain something called hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is what carries the oxygen in the blood cells, and, and like supposing the blood cells are the wrong shape, they won't be able to carry as much of the oxygen to muscles. This can result in things like muscle fatigue and stuff like that. So, 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 so sort of within this particular symptom, there are a number of different other symptoms. Because, for example, this symptom leads on to things like like muscle fatigue and sort of weakness in muscles. Okay. Right, so that's probably what I want to talk to you about in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it, and, and the next video will be on, on vitamin B8, which is also known as Initsol. Okay, so I'll see you then, and hope you've enjoyed this video. Goodbye.